Hey there, today I want to share a Reddit post that I saved off literally a year ago. You can see the date right here, and it's in the Game Dev subreddit. If you're not a fan of Reddit, I totally understand it. A lot of this stuff on there is just crazy nonsense. But the Game Dev and Unity and Programming subreddits tend to be really useful, and they're an interesting place to see some fun discussions. So today I want to talk about one of the questions that came up, or one of the topics that came up, and talk through a little bit of the discussion there, and hopefully clarify things for a couple of people and maybe just be interesting to other people. If this is any kind of interesting, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and drop a comment down below to let me know, and then I'll maybe do some more of these. So let's get right to it. So the post title is pretty simple. It says, a teenager trying to get into game development as a career. Let's see what the content is, though, because this is where it got interesting. It says, some context first. I'm a 13-year-old trying to learn game development. I started it last year, inspired by a fo fellow Reddit post, inspired by a fellow Reddit post, with learning Unity and C Sharp, and enjoyed it for a while. Then I started branching out and learning programming with C Sharp and Python, or with just, I guess, like C and Python, not C Sharp and Python. But I just didn't enjoy it as much and went back to game development. But then I started thinking about the future and getting jobs. I researched, then found out that game development isn't a very good job space to get into. And now I'm not sure what to pursue. I got into programming through game development, but it seems like I won't be able to pursue game development as my future. And I'm not sure where to go next. Any input would be appreciated. And when I first saw this post, I thought, oh, okay, well, I should probably reply and let them know that, of course, game development's an option 99% of the time, depending on where you are. But I wanted to first kind of read through the comments and, and the replies. And I found that everything I was going to say was kind of already said in these comments. So I want to go through and just read off the, the first one, because I think that it's important for people to understand the differences. And I think that Meaningful Choices here, who's a lead game designer, really kind of highlighted w what at least my, my general opinions on it. It says that the gaming industry can certainly be tougher than programming in general. The jobs are competitive, the workload can be higher, and the pay is lower. But that doesn't mean that it's not something worth working in, which is definitely true. <laughs> Plenty of us have had their careers, or have made their careers in livelihood in games. At some point, 20% less money, but working in a field you're passionate about can really be worth it. And I think before we even go on to the next parts, I really want to just call out how important that this part is. Theoretically, yes, you could make more money doing programming at a place like um, Google or Facebook Meta or any one of those big companies that has just insanely high billions and billions of dollar budgets, right? There, there's more money at the far top end. In my experience in the actual industry though, it's about the same. Game developers make about the same as regular programmers that aren't working in those extreme extreme levels where they're, you know, the, the crazy pay. But they're, um, and they're, I guess they're just generally not making even 20% less. But even if you were making 20% less, 20% less for a job that makes you happy, where you actually enjoy going to work, you are happy to get up in the morning, you're not dreading your day every day, and, and you love life, is more than worth it. I think that a lot of people will kind of try to, it's probably not even that many people, some people will try to optimize for the maximal money and forget about their happiness as well. And in the game industry, it's a lot easier, at least in my experience, to be happier with what you're working on and be more excited, thrilled, and really engaged with the project. So let's continue on through this answer though, because he said a couple other useful things. Or, yeah, I, I don't know who it was. Says, whatever, uh, what you want to avoid is trying to launch yourself straight into making your own games full time after high school or college. That's where you're not likely to make enough money to live off of. Fortunately, you've got eight years before you're applying for jobs and games, and that's an incredibly long time, which is, per I mean, at 13, that's the perfect time to actually start doing this, making your own games and start getting those out there because you've got the time, you've got the, um, you know, the lack of responsibilities in general, and you've got lots of free time to get in there and really learn about and dive into the things that you find fun and interesting, and that can definitely be game development. 
So I've lost my place here. Oh, it says 13 is a bit early to start worrying about learning things that are going to employ you later, which is true, but it's nice to be thinking about it. I think it's good to think like, hey, can I make money with this hobby or not? Is this hobby something I should really dive a lot into? And with game development or programming in general, the answer is, of course, yes. So it says just do what you enjoy and are curious about. Keep up your grades. Get into a good college for computer science. And while there, make some projects and games for your eventual portfolio. And this I would agree with, although I think that if you're 13, now 14, just start making the projects and games now. Build up that portfolio now. No need to wait until you're done with high school or get into college or anything else. You could definitely start doing it now. And depending on your skill level and, and your dedication and your situation, you could even get a job while you're in high school doing game development. I mean, I've I, I okay. How do I put? It? I know people who have hired high schoolers as game developers who worked out great, who were really good programmers and really amazing at it. I mean, if you look back at like uh, John Carmack, was he like sixteen and he started making Quake? Or do, I've lost track of my years and, and numbers, but you don't have to be old to be an amazing programmer or even to be a good programmer. You just have to really love it and really get into it. And well, there's probably some other magic in there too, but mostly I think it comes down to really loving it, spending a lot of time practicing, a lot of time researching and you know, having it be something that you're really into. Anything that you're really into, I think it's possible to get really good at. Maybe. Well, hopefully. We'll see. I don't know. Let's continue on one more time. So this is once you graduate, you can apply for gaming jobs and non-gaming ones to see what you get. Or you might have an entirely different feeling almost a decade from now. Working in games full-time at a studio or just making anything you want on the weekend after your non-gaming day job is are both fine. And that is true. A lot of people that I know that do non-game stuff just make games in their spare time for fun. It's like their, their nighttime hobby. And then they, some of them release those games and make money off them as well. This is the only person who can say which you'd like more is you. And before I wrap this up with my own thoughts, I wanted to call out the next two replies. There's a lot more to this thread. I'll link it down below so you can go check it out. But somebody mentioned that it's not just 20% less money. It's a lower probability of getting jobs and more hours. You could be working 50 hours a week for 60K or 30 hours a week for 80K. You could spend those 20 hours saved doing whatever you wanted, including game dev. I don't know. My point is not... It's not just less money, it's less time and freedom. That matters. This is the one thing that I disagree with completely. I, you know, I've seen people working 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Most of the time, they were not the ones in the game companies. They were the ones in the other tech companies writing just normal software that was not exciting and not interesting. There are a couple of guys in the uh, game industry that I know that work crazy, crazy hours, but they were going to work crazy hours on just about anything because that's just who they are, or they really love their projects. They're either like perfectionists that really want everything to be perfect, really want to have like the best possible thing, or they really love their project, or usually it's a combination of both. But in general, I've seen less overtime work in game development, which I know probably sounds strange given how much crunch is such a thing, and um, more in it just general enterprise stuff, which is weird, but I feel like with game development, people don't push you nearly as much to crunch, where with uh, enterprise stuff, there's always some vice president or executive vice president or executive executive vice president that needs to see something in half an hour and now everybody's got to crunch throughout the night to get it to them by tomorrow at least. So that's, I would say, not necessarily a true statement. The pay might be a little bit less, but could be higher too. It just really depends on where you are and what that tech job is. The one point though that I think is really strong here that I can't disagree with is that the likelihood of getting a job is just lower because there are less jobs. And it's not necessarily that you have a lower probability of getting a job. You just have to work a little bit harder to get the job. There are less programming jobs for game programmers than there are for non-game programmers. There's also a lot less competition for game programming jobs than non-game programming jobs. So that's something to consider. So it does take a little bit more work. It does sometimes depend on the area that you're in because there are software companies everywhere. There are game development companies some places, but most of the places take remote work now. So I thought that this was at least a, an interesting post and something worth 
talking about in my experience or my, my opinion i would say for the 13 year old who's now 14 keep working on your game dev skills do the part that um, is interesting it's definitely worthwhile to branch out and start learning some other things see what um, python's like see what some web languages are like um, do a little bit of database stuff too and kind of get that broad exposure because then when you're working in your game stuff you'll have this wider idea of ways that you can do things and systems and things that are available to you and you'll have the ability to jump back into non-game programming stuff anytime that you want. But if you're into game stuff, I would say put your focus there, um, loosely learn about other things. And if you ever need to get a non-game programming job as a game programmer, it's it's almost too easy. You go in there with any game dev experience and uh, people realize that it's generally a lot harder than most enterprise, not all enterprise stuff, but most day-to-day -day enterprise jobs doing regular game development is quite a bit more difficult. And the enterprise job will just seem like simple cake to you. It, it'll seem like something that's relatively easy to do. Again, some edge cases, obviously. Some people have got crazy cool projects, but most of them are relatively simple. So I would stick with the game stuff, um, learn the game development, master it, see what you can do with it, and hopefully you have a lot of fun with it. I, I'm actually really curious. I should probably go look up this poster's history and see what they actually decided to do. Maybe I'll do that in a follow-up video. Anyway, if this was interesting, let me know. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, uh, drop a comment down below. And if it was terrible, hit the thumbs down button and uh, drop a comment down below and let me know as well. All right, bye.